Xenoblade X has got to be one of the most overlooked and underrated Xenoblade games out there. With the release of Xenoblade 3, which is projected to be a massive success, it leads to the question, will Xenoblade X ever receive a port to the Switch? Well, along with answering that question, in this video I'll also answer why a port to the Switch is something this game deserves. So what is Xenoblade X? Well, within the series, it's considered a side game. It kind of does its own thing in its story and world, and it is, for the most part, disconnected within the universe of Xenoblade 1 and 2, at least so far. When playing the game, it really does feel like you're in this alien world. It's so different from the other entries in the series that the setting is quite fitting. So in Xenoblade 3, the entire concept of the world is that it's the combination of Xenoblade 1 and 2's setting. And from what I've seen, it's devoid of any references to Xenoblade X in its environments or in its story. It did, however, reference the uh, Full Metal Jaguar class from the game, which is nice. They even use similar functions to the follow ball. Hopefully we'll see more than just references to Xenoblade X when the game comes out, but it's pretty unlikely. It's kind of memed on that this game is kind of the forgotten child of the series and that it gets put on the back burner. And there's definitely some truth to that, but I don't believe Monolith Soft has given up on this game entirely. The thing about Xenoblade X is it's one of the most ambitious games Monolith Soft has ever created. It is the first and so far only open world Xenoblade game. The other titles are described as such in their marketing, but Xenoblade X is the only game that actually has seamless exploration. You can go from one continent to the next with no loading screens. Nearly every location or landmark that you can see, you can explore. And that's thanks to absolutely one of the coolest features Xenoblade X has to offer, and that is the scales. Essentially, scales are these mechs that you can customize, fight in, drive, and even fly around at some point. They did such a great job with it too. Unlocking the flight module and the scales was such an amazing moment for me in the game. Personally, Xenoblade X has the best exploration experience that any Xenoblade game has ever offered. Coupled with how incredible this game looks for th something they made on the Wii U, there are moments in the game that I was actually shocked at how good it looked. The lighting and textures often look stunning for something on this limited console. It was visually very competitive with other games on other consoles for the time. Another cool feature that Xenoblade X has that other Xenoblade games don't is the online functionalities. Molosoft describes the game as loosely connected with other players. Essentially, they're describing a way to be online without actually having to be fearful of interacting with other people because they recognize a true online experience uh, may not be something that everybody wants. Essentially, they didn't want it to be an MMO. The way it works is that if your Wii U is connected to the internet, then uh, so are you within the game. They put you in a squad of 32 people and essentially you can share loot. You guys can complete these pop-up missions and objectives, but you don't actually see each other in the game. But when there is a mission to kill like a specific boss and you accept, then you're actually playing with real people if if you decide to do so. You can also invite these players' avatars into your party as NPCs to help you out exploring or doing some story quests in the game. It's a really cool way to give this giant, expansive world a little bit of life, and it makes it feel a lot less lonely uh, with the loosely connected world. Also, it had Miiverse messages that would pop up, but that functionality is currently gone, along with the achievements that were attached with it in the game. Rest in peace, Miiverse. Uh, Another unique thing they did with this game was deciding on who the composer would be for the soundtrack, and that was Hiroyuki Sawano. As a big fan of the music in Attack on Titan at the time, the game's soundtrack came as a wonderful surprise. Honestly, the music in this game is incredible and composed in such a very unique style compared to the other Xenoblade games. Seriously, the OST is god tier. If you haven't listened to it already, I, I highly recommend it. I will say personally, I wasn't too involved with the story as much as the other Xenoblade games. Compared to how incredible the other stories are, this game I wasn't too impressed with in that regard. But the sheer amount of content within the game along the incredible side quests, uh, I didn't mind because there's just so much more to this game than just the story. The developers mentioned that players make their own experience with this game and I couldn't agree with them more. It's a very easy game to immerse yourself in and fall in love with. I want to touch on the combat and the movement in the game. It's like if Xenoblade 1's combat took some alien steroids. The combat is similar in its layout, but the way you can move around and jump and, and swap weapons, use overdrives, and fight with your mechs is very unique and, in my opinion, incredibly enjoyable. As a Monster Hunter fan, it's got one of my favorite features, the ability to break the appendages on enemies, usually larger ones. This would reduce their damage dealing capabilities to some degree and added some cool depth to the game. The combat system can be quite complicated, 
but it's definitely fun to mess around with and the class system is a great addition. It's the only Xenoblade game where you can sprint around and jump like you're the Incredible Hulk. It actually goes so well with how vast and expansive the world is. And there is no fall damage to boot, which is a blessing. Sprinting across these landscapes just feel right. And it's a movement option I hope to see in future Xenoblade games. Lastly, another great thing about Xenoblade X is... Uh, uh, look at this lovable little guy. Yeah. Yeah, look at that guy. You don't want to miss out on Tatsu. Tatsu, everybody. Xenoblade X is not only a unique experience for the franchise, but it has some of the best qualities they've ever produced in a Xenoblade game. I absolutely recommend any fans of the series or fans of immersive JRPG games in general to give it a chance and play it. And honestly, the best way for me to recommend that to people is if they had a Switch port for them to play it on. This game absolutely deserves it, so what's stopping them? Well, there's a few things, but let's go over them individually. Because the game was on the Wii U, the uh, gamepad itself was a very important feature for the gameplay. It allowed you to quickly access your map and fast travel, check on your nodes, amongst other things. It made traversing the large world of Mira very convenient. Something that perhaps not too many people know is that you can still play the game solely on the gamepad like it was a Switch. You may be wondering how you can access the map this way. Well, I can show you. The quickest way is tapping on the gamepad. So what you wanna do is you wanna tap on the screen and then you want to go over to this button right here. And bam, you are on the quick map. So let's say you wanted to quick travel. Let's try to do this this way. It's kind of hard to orient myself. And yeah, there we go. Boom. So I'm quick traveling on the main screen, but that's okay. You don't need to see that because you can just go tap this again and you're back in the game. That was a little scuffed, but I think you get the point. So basically, uh, even though I was swapping through the modes, I didn't actually have to be in front of my TV or monitor. So you can definitely experience the entirety of Xenoblade X without having to worry about needing two screens. So this technical aspect of the game is something they can definitely overcome. They don't need to do it in the same way with the gamepad. They can just probably add like a menu or button or something. There is another issue though, and that it's the comically sized text in the game. It's just way too small and there's no way to adjust it, making it difficult to play on the gamepad for some people. However, I'm sure that if this game got ported, they could easily just adjust that or give us an option to do so. If we look at the port slash remaster of Xenoblade 1, Xenoblade Definitive Edition, they were not opposed to adding quality of life additions. For example, the addition to add a quest navigator in the minimap is something the game definitely needed and they added it in a very intuitive way. They're not opposed to going above and beyond when enhancing a game for a different console, even when they are limited in budget and time. That being said, I don't believe they need to do a remaster in the way they did for Xenoblade 1. The Wii graphics were definitely dated and needed a bit of a refresher, uh, whereas Xenoblade X looks perfectly fine to be brought to the Switch, barring any technical problems that would prohibit the game from doing so. Xenoblade X is a huge game, but compression technology has come a long way since 2015. I truly believe they could squeeze it into a Switch cartridge in this day and age. For example, if they can put a game like The Witcher 3 and Nier on the Switch, I'm sure they could do something with Xenoblade X. Another issue with the game itself is its low sales. There are a multitude of factors, but the most prominent ones that it was released on the Wii U, which is widely recognized as a failed console, but it also released towards the end of the Wii U's life cycle, when the Nintendo Switch was already announced. Perhaps people expected it to be ported in the near future on a console coming out so soon, but that was not the case as Monolith Soft was busy developing Xenoblade 2, along with helping with other Nintendo projects at this time, so it wasn't their priority. Xenoblade 2 ended up selling 2.17 million copies, in contrast to Xenoblade X's 317,000. Now that is a big difference, but I'd argue the game only being played by 300,000 people is so much wasted potential. The quality of the game definitely makes it deserving of a port, even though it didn't sell well because of these circumstances. They put an immense amount of work into building this game, and in my opinion, they could definitely sell a lot of copies of Xenoblade X if it came to the Switch and a new larger audience, further strengthening the Xenoblade brand, which they have stated is one of their biggest priorities. But enough of what I have to say, what did series director Tetsuya Takahashi have to say about porting Xenoblade X to the Switch. Well, in a 2018 interview with US Gamer, he was asked, is there a chance we can see a Xenoblade X port to the Switch? Takahashi replied, well, the future is unclear, which is the same answer he got when US Gamer asked them about Xenoblade 3, which by the way is about to release. Personally speaking, I'd love to play the game on Switch, but it would be really difficult to make. When asked what the main roadblock is, Takahashi responds with, money, he laughs. It's a massive game 
recreating it would be difficult. So for them, it seems the biggest roadblock is money. Well, Monolith Soft is growing and expanding in recent years, with new studios opening up, uh, with backing from Nintendo, and with the increasing success of all the Xenoblade games. It's very likely they could get the money to make this port happen. Now, inferring from what Takahashi said, it doesn't seem like it could be something that would be copy and paste it onto the Switch. There might be problems and limitations that would require a lot of work. But I truly believe Xenoblade X is a game that they're proud of what they achieved, both in its technical aspects and its ambition. He mentions that it would be a difficult process, but that's never stopped them in the past. Even with their development of Xenoblade X, they did so many things they found difficult. They mentioned making an open, seamless world was difficult, deciding to make the world have online functionalities was difficult, adding scales to traverse the world was also difficult, and yet they still implemented it all, and they didn't do it in a way that was half-assed. Ultimately, Xenoblade X is an incredible game that missed out on its time in the spotlight. And I believe Monolith Soft will both have the time and the money in the future to make this portal reality. Not only to get a ton of sales, but to also show the next generation of gamers what they achieved back in 2015, along with what this incredible game has to offer by porting this game to the Switch. So to answer whether or not they're going to port Xenoblade X to the Switch, in my opinion, the answer is yes, they will. I have a very good feeling that it'll be on their to-do list while one of their teams are working on the expansion pass for Xenoblade 3. In a past interview, they mentioned that they were working on the expansion game uh, Torna for Xenoblade 2 and Xenoblade 1 Definitive Edition at the same time. So I can definitely see them doing a similar workflow, but this time with Xenoblade 3's expansion pass and Xenoblade X Definitive Edition or whatever they intend to call it. It's true that it's rumored they're working on a fantasy project as well right now, but since they have so many more employees now and they have so many studios, I'm sure they have plenty of people left over to work on something like this. And if they ever plan on making a sequel to Xenoblade X, then I'm sure they'd want the original to be on Switch, similar to what happened with uh, Xenoblade 1 and 2. Another important thing I want to mention is that uh, very soon, Xenoblade X won't have its online functionalities anymore. They can only have the Wii U servers up for so long, and porting it will be the only way to keep this integral part of this game alive. To not have a port and have this big part of the game die off would be tragic, and I'd hope it'd be something to give them another reason to make this port happen. So far I was correct in my prediction for Xenoblade 3 in a past video, and hopefully I can be right again. Not just for me, but for all the fans that want this game to finally head its way to the Switch, and all the future fans who will enjoy the game. Hopefully this video convinced you. Uh, of course, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on whether or not you see Monolith Soft porting Xenoblade X. Please let me know down in the comments whether or not you think so. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Xeno stuff, please consider subscribing. And come check out the Twitch, man. Twitch.tv slash flyin'. It's a good time there, I promise. Anyways, take care, and I look forward to playing with you guys on Xenoblade X, hopefully on the Switch. Alright, see ya.